Welcome everyone. I'm Janet Slick, President and CEO of the Chicago Lighthouse, where we serve people who are blind, visually impaired, disabled, and veterans. I want to thank you all for coming out today and joining us. I want to first start by thanking and extending my deepest appreciation to the 103 artists involved in creating these magnificent lighthouses and their generous sponsors. <laughs> Seeing all you kind people assembled today reminds me of a quote from Mark Twain that I believe is relevant for today's world and today's event. The quote is, kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. For in fact, we are celebrating kindness uh, that is represented by the access and inclusion for people with disabilities. At the Lighthouse, we have seen firsthand how kindness and a focus on access and inclusion can change lives. And we know that it is critical that we break down barriers and obstacles that prevent people from being employed who are living with disabilities. Today, over 50 lighthouse sculptures line Chicago's magnificent mile that serve as bright reminders that we need to be beacons and champions for people with disabilities. This large scale public art display is taking our message to a vast audience of visitors to this avenue. There are about 40,000 on average per day. This citywide event is also encouraging businesses to hire people with disabilities and be the beneficiaries of great talent, as there are tens of millions of people um, in our country who can possibly be engaged in the workforce who currently are not participating. Here are some figures that should astound you be, that are behind our initiative. According to national statistics, 70% of Americans with disabilities are unemployed. According to U.S. Census data, about 57 million people have a disability in this country. With the, in the state of Illinois, there are approximately 1.4 million residents with a disability, half of whom are in Cook County and a quarter of a million in Chicago alone. In addition, a portion of the disabled population are included in the 750,000 veterans living in Illinois. As Chicagoans, we are proud that this city has a nationwide force, has led a nationwide force for access and inclusion. Chicago was regarded as one of the friendliest and most accommodating cities in the world for people with disabilities. Due to Justice Ann Burke's foresight, Chicago hosted this first Special Olympic Games 50 years ago. She is joining us today and is a longtime partner and friend of the Lighthouse. Thanks to progressive politics initiated by Richard M. Daley and carried through by Mayor Emanuel, Chicago has led the way in providing public transportation and infrastructure that is accessible to people with disabilities. Our iconic cultural institutions and museums like the Shedd Aquarium have won critical praise for efforts to accommodate people with disabilities. In that same vein, the Lighthouse has been recognized in a as a pioneer in innovation since 1906, providing rehabilitation services, education, employment opportunities, and assistive technology for people of all ages. Thanks to our private and public partners, some of whom will be speaking today, the Lighthouse is able to walk the talk. Today, approximately 1,000 people receive a Lighthouse paycheck, a third of whom are blind, visually impaired, disabled, or veterans. We walk with our nonprofit partners, some of whom are here with us today. Access Living, represented by Daisy Fight, their COO. Daisy, are you here? Annexter Center, represented here by their chair, Mary McDonald. Mary. And Rebecca Clark, its CEO. And the Hadley Institute, led by its president, Julie Tai. I believe Julie Tai is with us. There she is. 
We have dedicated a special lighthouse on the Mag Mile to this partnership that bears a favorite quote from Helen Keller that is very relevant. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. The lighthouse is right here with Helen Keller's beautiful image. Together we are issuing a call to other Chicago employers to join us and be beacons for access and inclusion. Please join us in opening your doors to greater opportunities for people with disabilities. We would like to recognize some of our partners who have been beacons for access and inclusion in the workplace. The Illinois Tollway Authority, its executive director, Liz Gorman, will be addressing us today. The University of Illinois Health System and Facilities Management Division, Advocate Healthcare, the Illinois Departments of Financial and Professional Regulation and Banking, the Illinois Department of Human Rights, Cook County Health System, Jet Pay, and Illinois Joining Forces, another nonprofit serving veterans. We are proud to have lighthouses on the Mag Mile honoring all of you in, for your trailblazing efforts. We would like to recognize and thank these individuals who are here with us today representing our city's leadership who have also championed our efforts. Alderman Brendan Riley, who approved us being within his ward on the avenue with our lighthouses, and Alderman Walter Brunette, Jr., who's a champion in our ward and has been a great supporter of the lighthouse. We'd also like to thank Commissioner Camlin, Karen Tamley of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, who could not be with us today, but has been very supportive of all of our efforts in helping people with disabilities. We want to thank the Lions community for their 100 years of partnership represented here today by past international director, Dan O'Reilly. Dan is here, I know. And his wife, Lion Miriam O'Reilly. We want to acknowledge all of our colleagues in the disability community, commend them for their great work, and thank them for their support of this initiative. They include Will Towns of Benefit Chicago. Will, are you here? Will? Um, our friends from Chicago Community Trust, our friends from Friedman Place, Alexander Brown, their CEO, and the artists who are visually impaired and blind for producing a beautiful tactile knitted lighthouse in front of the Rawl Greens just down the way. Now I'd like to begin the presentations of individuals who are also great beacons. The board of the Chicago Lighthouse consists of 39 enlightened leaders who are great Chicagoans and who volunteer their time and talents to promote our mission. Many are here with us, and I hope that you'll have an opportunity to meet them. Our next two speakers are members of our board. The first is David Huber of Huber Financial Advisors. David stepped up to the plate to be lead sponsor of Lighthouse on the Mag Mile and a beacon for inclusive workplaces. He said it was the best way he could think of to celebrate his 30th anniversary of his business and his decade-long service on the board of the Chicago Lighthouse. He has provided great financial leadership, serving as our past treasurer and chair of our finance committee. We couldn't be more fortunate. David is a family man. He and his wife, Nancy, have three beautiful children and grandchildren. He is an avid golfer and has generously supported our golf and dinner fundraisers throughout the years. Here to tell his inspiring story is Mr. David Huber. Good morning. Whoa. Uh, I, I had the opportunity this morning. Um, I stayed down, down up on Michigan Avenue last night, uh, so I didn't have to drive in from Barrington today. And uh, I was just blown away by the the sculptures, the lighthouses as I walked up Michigan Avenue. So if you guys have a chance when you're finished here, definitely take advantage of it. It's, it's something to see. On behalf of Huber Financial Advisors, I'd like to thank the Chicago Lighthouse for the opportunity to partner with them in, the, in this amazing event called Lighthouses on the Mag Mile. We are partnering with the Lighthouse to give voice to what is possible for people living with disabilities when they are included and supported in their workplace and surrounding communities. This partnership holds a particular significance for me because I, I have my own visual impairment. Um, you see, in 1995, I suffered a fully detached retina. 
which left me totally blind in my right eye. My son, Phil, who is here today, uh, experienced the same issue and went through a corrective surgery a few years ago, and fortunately, he's fully recovered. People with disabilities can do just about anything if given a chance, and they are some of the most productive and efficient employees you'll encounter. All they are asking for is an opportunity. Finally, I'd like to thank my fellow Chicago Lighthouse board members. A number of you are here today. Lighthouse employees who do an amazing job. All of the other sponsors participating in this event. And a special thanks to all of the incredibly talented artists able to showcase their amazing talents. Please encourage your family and your friends to be beacons of support and come to the Mag Mile this summer for this special initiative. We hope each of you will come to enjoy these incredible lighthouses, which now line the Mag Mile from Oak Street to Madison Street. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'd now like to introduce our current Lighthouse Board Chair, Gary Rich. Gary took over the reins last June. Given his vast background in building businesses and marketing, Gary fully embraced and supported the Mag Mile initiative. Under his leadership and strong financial stewardship, the customer service social enterprise at the Lighthouse has grown, fostering significant job growth. It is my pleasure to introduce a beacon who shines brightly, Mr. Gary Rich. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Janet, for that wonderful introduction. And thanks to all of you here today to celebrate the lighthouses on the magnificent mile. Every day here at the Chicago Lighthouse, we change lives with our innovative programs and supporting people with disabilities. So it's no surprise that of the 103 artists that participated in this event, over 50% are, are have people with disabilities ranging from low or no sight to cognitive, emotional, and the physical. These uniquely decorated lighthouses are proof that having a disability need not be a roadblock to being a contributing member of our society. We hope you enjoy the 51 lighthouses as much as we have enjoyed being a part of the process introducing this public art display to the city of Chicago. And I hope as you view each of the individual lighthouses, you'll find one that will move you, that will touch your heart, and we're hoping this will touch the hearts of all the Chicagoans and tourists who come by to see it. Thanks again for being here today to celebrate this wonderful event. Thank you, Gary. Our next speaker, Ms. Liz Gorman, Executive Director of the Illinois Tollway Authority, is well known as a beacon for her service to the people of Illinois. Liz Gorman's public service encompasses more than 12 years as a Cook County Commissioner and Forest Preserve District Commissioner. Through her leadership on efforts to streamline Cook County government and advocacy for issues creating better economic opportunities for her constituents, Executive Director Gorman earned the reputation as a problem solver who brings diverse groups together to build consensus. She is continuing to pursue the path of inclusion and access for disabilities taken by her predecessors at the Illinois Tollway Authority, for which we are most grateful. We have benefited by our partnership with the Tollway since 2013, providing hundreds of jobs for people in need of employment opportunities. Notably, the Illinois Tollway has won a number of humanitarian awards for fostering an accessible and inclusive work environment. We are honored by her presence here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Liz Gorman. Good morning. I'm thrilled to be here today promoting greater opportunities for people with disabilities throughout the region. I would like to talk, thank Dr. Janet Schleich and the entire Lighthouse organization for being such strong partners in the operation of the Illinois Tollway Customer Service Call Center for, and for the opportunity to support today's important announcement. 
The Illinois Tollway Customer Service Call Center provides state-of-the-art service to more than 4.4 million active IPASS account holders, representing more than 6.3 transponders. This is no small venture. Since 2012, the Illinois Tollway and the Chicago Lighthouse have partnered to provide Tollway customers top quality, one-on-one -on -one personalized customer service. This has resulted in the creation of hundreds of reliable, good-paying jobs for members of the underserved communities, people with disabilities, and veterans. Large workstations are designed to accommodate wheelchairs and bigger computer monitors to help staff who are visually impaired. Making this technology accessible for persons with disabilities removes barriers and creates new inclusive economic opportunities. Since the beginning of our partnership in 2012, the number of call center employees has grown tremendously from 150 to more than 400, providing greater independence for people with disabilities and helping hundreds provide financially for their families. Because of our success with the Chicago Lighthouse, the tollway has been recognized as a model for other employers by the Social Responsibility Award from the International Bridge, Tunnel, and Turnpike Association. And because of our commitment to providing jobs for people with disabilities, we've been recognized three times as Agency of the Year from the State of Illinois Intra-Agency Committee on Employees with Disabilities. We're very proud of that. These beautiful 51 new lighthouses on the Mag Mile are a celebration of access and inclusion for all. These lighthouses stand as pillars of empowerment and hope for people with disabilities, beacons for those who break down barriers in the workplace to create long-lasting opportunities, and reminds us all of the importance of inclusion and accessibility for everyone. The Tollway shares and champions these values, and today we join the Chicago Lighthouse in calling on other Chicago area employers to become beacons for access and inclusion. Let's continue to work together to open doors to greater opportunities for people with disabilities. Thank you. Our lead artist for the Lighthouses on the Mag Mile Initiative is internationally acclaimed artist Jeff Hansen. That's it. At age 24, Jeff Hansen is an award-winning philanthropic artist on a mission to change the world through art. He was visually impaired since childhood from a brain tumor that impacted his visual pathways. Jeff's acrylics on canvas works to employ bold color and heavily sculptured texture to create an unmistakable Jeff Hansen signature style, which he calls a sight for sore eyes in that it can be appreciated by everyone, even those who are severely visually impaired and those who are blind through touch. Jeff received national attention for raising $1 million for charity with his art by his 20th birthday. Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's partners in the art world are his father, Hal, a physician, and his mother, Julie, incredibly supporting parents. His work adorns the homes of celebrities such as Elton John and financier Warren Buffett. Jeff's new milestone goal is to raise $10 million for charity by the age of 30. He has currently raised $4 million towards that $10 million goal. I have a feeling he'll make his goal. He has designed a beautiful lighthouse right behind us here with his highly textured, high contrast style, and aptly entitled Sailing Chicago Harbor created with the inspiration of one of his biggest fans and sponsor, David Huber. I think all of this qualifies Jeff Hansen as a beacon. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Hansen. Thank you. Thank you. The reason why I per participated in this event is because of the fact that the Chicago Lighthouse every day helps people like me and other visually and disabil and other people with disabilities every day so they can live a standard everyday life. I also this event means to this event means to me that 
you can use your disability to make awareness for others, which then should become an ability of theirs. Like, don't let your low vision define you. Also, the, the, um, process, the, the process of design of my lighthouse was I first sketched it out with mom and dad on a piece of paper, then I textured it and carved it, then it finally got painted to which it is now. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. It is a privilege to introduce our next speaker who is a strong beacon in our world. Illinois Supreme Court Justice Ann Burke has been a longtime partner and friend of the Chicago Lighthouse. She was previously a speaker at Arcane Legal Luncheon, celebrated the 20th anniversary of the signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act in 2010, and in 2016, she and her husband, Alderman Edward Burke, were honored at our gala, receiving the Beacon of Light Award, the highest honor bestowed upon a lighthouse friend for her support of people with disabilities. She also received a prestigious Diversity Trailblazer Award in 2013 at the annual diversity dinner organized by Barnes and Thornburg Law Firm under the direction of one of its lead attorneys, Cook County Commissioner Richard Boykin, who is also a decade-long member of the Chicago Lighthouse Board. On July 20th, 1968, Burke, then a physical education instructor, organized the first International Special Olympics in Chicago with the support of Eunice Kennedy Shriver and the Kennedy Foundation. Justice Burke is a member of the American, Illinois, State, Chicago, and Women's Bar Associations and the Illinois Judges Association. It is an honor to have Justice Ann Burke at our celebration today. Thank you, Jan, and good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to introduce our unified artist, David Holt, a Special Olympian, and Cassidy Winston. And they, together, did this beautiful lighthouse commemorating the 50th anniversary of Special Olympics. Chicago has always been a light years ahead of the rest of the nation when it comes to access in inclusion for persons with disabilities. And 50 years ago this July, Special Olympics was born here in Chicago. And for all of us, today is the beginning of a truly wonderful event. Lighthouses on the Mag Mile, an amazing art display celebrating access and inclusion for all persons with disabilities. Also beginning today and continuing through August 11th, anyone who walks down Chicago's famed North Michigan Avenue will be treated to a visually stunning free public art display featuring 51 six foot high lighthouse sculptures created by national, Jeffrey included, and local artists, many of them persons with disabilities. Just as Special Olympics provided a venue for persons with disabilities to demonstrate what they can accomplish, these beautifully designed lighthouses, sculptures, affirms the talent and capabilities of people with disabilities. This event could not be more timely, given that Special Olympics is celebrating its 50th anniversary this summer here in Chicago, where the very first games began. Special Olympics 50th anniversary has sponsored one of the lighthouses on the Mag Mile, the Special Olympics Lighthouse, which is called Unified can be found at 600 North Michigan Avenue. I think it's in front of Tiffany's. I'll have to get my husband to walk me over there. I'll let you know, I doubt it though. Commemorating the, commemorating the 50th anniversary of Special Olympics, Lighthouse depicts athletes as they compete in sports such as track and field, volleyball and basketball. The word unity is featured prominently on the Lighthouse representing inclusion not only for persons with intellectually dis disabilities, but visually impaired, but all special needs of individuals throughout our world. 
and I'm honored and humbled to be here with the art artist that created Unified, David Holt, who is a Chicago resident, and of course, our hero, Special Olympic athlete, and his assistant, Cassidy Winston, who is a Fenwick High School student, and hopefully will be going to DePaul University next year, Cassidy. Thank you for including me, and thank you. Be sure to walk the Mag Mile. Our final speaker is Mr. John Chico, President and CEO of the Mag Mile Association. He was previously the Executive Director at the Institute of Real Estate Management Foundation. I would like the Mag Mile, I, I would like to recognize the Mag Mile for being our partner in every step of the way in this process and making it seem really seamless. Um, and he really taught us how a public art display can be accomplished. So we're very grateful to him. John's support of people with disabilities and his role also as a beacon goes well back before his current role as president and CEO of the Mag Mile Association where he hired people through the Chicago Lighthouse's Employment Services Program. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you our final speaker, uh, Mr. Chico. Okay, before I begin, everybody that's doing this with their pictures and, and videos, etc., two things you have to remember, hashtag Mag Mile Lighthouses and at the Mag Mile. You cannot underappreciate how much impact you will each have today in making this event and this activity up and down the Mag Mile to go viral. And that's what this is about today. Raise awareness and this is how you're going to do it. So hashtag Mag Mile Lighthouses and the Mag Mile at the Mag Mile and we're going to make a difference uh, through social media today. It is my pleasure to uh, be here as we launch our Summer of Public Art program on the Mag Mile with Chicago Lighthouse. Uh, we're, we're so pleased to have so many uh, distinguished guests here today. Uh, as you all know, tourism uh, in Chicago is at a record level. Visitors to the Magnificent Mile is at a record level. And, and we are absolutely so pleased to, to be the uh, hosts of these public art campaigns with a purpose, with a purpose. So, uh, so we appreciate your being here, but I just have to tell you, I, when, when, when my staff first came to me and said, we've got this organization called Chicago Lighthouse, do you know them? And I just smiled, I just smiled, because 20 years ago, back before these things were there, if you called Cannonball Courier and you needed a package picked up, somebody was on that phone, typing into a computer and, and away we go. And we learned from Chicago Lighthouse for the Blind at the time that uh, they had technology that could mirror up and help that blind or that visually impaired order taker and put that order into the system. And very quickly, uh, Jody came to work for us. She was the first of many clients that we hired and 98% accuracy rate. Nobody had 98% accuracy rate in that team. And over time, I think we averaged about four visually impaired employees during that time. Jody went on to meet her husband through Chicago Lighthouse, and uh, before I parted company with her, uh, had a baby and was raising a family, and that was 20 years ago. So the, the, work, the good work was happening back then, the good work is happening now, but more importantly, you're gonna do the right good work and make a social media impact with today's activities. Thank you for coming to the Magma. That concludes our program. Again, we want to thank you all for being here. Download Autocast, the Autocast app, as well on your phone so you can hear the narration in the artist's own words, the description of their lighthouses and how they perceive disability and how it's reflected on their lighthouse. Thank you for coming.